Hi guys, it's Sam. Today's video is going to be about all of my books for 2020. I would say that it's a planner stack, but really there's only one planner involved here. Um, Rings is the system that I'm going to be using for the year. I'm not gonna go, let me pull this post-it out of here. I'm not gonna go into an in-depth um, video about it because I've recently done several videos about it and I will have several more videos coming about it, but I am using, in case you're new to this channel, I'm using a Filofax Malden in personal size as my planner and this is where all of my brain goes. Um, I have moved away from the Hobonichi Weeks, which I enjoyed and uh, loved carrying around for a couple of years, but I really think that rings is my thing and I'm using this much more than I was using the Hobonichi Weeks. Um, putting things into the sections and rearranging things um, with with no fear and that I think is helping me to be more functional in my planning. So I am a very functional planner, although I have some pretty things and I've made dividers, um, not all about all of the decoration and all of that. It's used as also my wallet, which is the reason why right now I'm using a Filofax Malden instead of my usual go-to Filofax Original. So if you like watch my videos or are on my Instagram feed, you'll see that I change the colors up pretty frequently, um, just as my mood depends. Right now I'm happy in this one. Uh, this one is the Stone Malden. It's a nice warm gray. And aside from pictures in the front and the dividers, the only thing that's decorative about it really is my gnome charm from the Wooly Planner. So it's just something that I use easier than the clips, which I love to look at, but they fall off in my purse. So right now that is all that I have going on with my file of facts. If you'd like to see like a setup of this, I can link one of my most recent videos for you below. And I was really kind of on the fence about a couple of things going into this year, but I've, I've stayed true to my course. Um, I guess I can't, I mean, I can't officially call this a planner stack because only one thing is a planner. Um, the next thing is going to be my journal. Right now I have it in my Delphonics pouch and I will tell you why it's in that pouch um, as well. So this is a B6 Slim Cafe Notes notebook and I buy these grab a blank one. I buy these directly from the Nanami website. And so I had intended to use, let me see, is this the old one? Okay. So for the first half of 2019, I used my A6 Hobonichi and I kind of had intended on continuing using this, but I got kind of irritated at the fact that I could not put bigger pieces of memories in and bigger photos or if I put a photo in I didn't have enough room to write and it became a lot less of an artsy journal which kind of intimidated me um, and it turned into more of words and I don't know I felt like if I had a photo and some thoughts that I didn't have enough um, to like enough space to write and that is also dated and some days I don't feel like journaling at all as you'll see <laughs> and some days I like to journal about a lot of things like we had um, our trip in September to San Francisco and I am pretty sure that we I had like 23 pages just for um, like two and a half days of stuff 23 pages either photos um, mementos, but mostly writing because I wanted to write like everything down about this uh, trip. So that would have never worked in a dated journal because it would have given me, there's a hair that's going to bother me. Um, it would have given me one day for each of those days and I just prefer this size better. I kind of struggled back and forth with what to do because um, 
I really thought that I would have the rest of this filled for 2019 and then I would move into the new one for 2020. However, um, I'm feeling so much peace about not having to journal every day and see those blank pages. As you can see, I have not journaled since December 16th. Now that does not mean that there are not things that I want to write about, photos that I will have printed out and those memories I'm gonna go back and put in here. But I, with the holidays, um, with working all of the time and trying to do Christmas shopping and wrapping presents, uh, you know, for six children and a husband on top of working, on top of life, um, there was really not a lot of time to do that. So what my fix for that is that when I use my planner, I will use, you know, if I don't have a an appointment going on or something, I'll write something in here to remember. So if I'll go back to December the 16th and I'll be like, oh, okay, yep, that happened on December 16th and I'll write that down. So if something noteworthy or something that I want to make a memory about um, and expound upon on the 17th, then I'll do that. And I'll go through here, um, likely today on my day off um, with nothing going on and I'll take some time to sit down and journal. Based on the amount that I have used for the last half of 2016 and 2016, 20, 2019, and knowing that I don't have like, we do have a, a Metallica event planned for this year. We're going to a, a festival in May and they're gonna be headlining two out of the three days of the festival. So, I mean, there'll be something I know we'll be writing about, but I'm not going to have like an epic trip. At least it's not planned so far. Um, so with the amount that I've been journaling, I think 2020 will likely fit in here. And if it doesn't, then I'll just rearrange my plans and not have one book per year like I had hoped. But the plan, the plan is to finish 2020 in this one Nanami and then move forward from there. I like the idea of having a journal per year, but I think that what's important is to journal as I feel like instead of boxing myself in. So I'm kind of letting go of that whole, no, you have to have one book a year mindset, but it's been difficult. So there, is the size of the Nanami Cafe Note, and then there is an elusive A6 Nanami Cafe Note. Now, I had purchased one at the same time that I purchased my first B6 Slim, I believe, and then I sold it because I fell in love with the B6 Slim. The only problem is I love Chic Sparrow, and they have a B6 Slim option coming this year. There is no date announced. I have a B6 Slim Chic Sparrow folio, but this was a gift from Jennifer for my birthday last year. And so this is like a one-off. Um, the upcoming design, I will tell you, spoiler alert, does not have a front pocket. Um, the last um, it was mentioned. So there is, there is going to be a B6 Slim option, but there hasn't been. So. As much as I love my folio, if you know me at all, you know that I like to have options and I like to kind of switch things up. So I've been very happy in this, but I've kind of been forced <laughs> into being content because there weren't more options because there are definitely more leathers that I would completely be switching in and out of. So it's, it's been good, I think, for me to really not have as many options because I've been happy just with what I have. But that being said, with the elusive A6 Nanami Cafe notes, um, my friend Lisa had one and she decided she wasn't going to use it anymore. So she sold it to me and it arrived just yesterday. And so I paired this with the Chic Sparrow A6 folio. And this is Mr. Darcy. This is in the uh, Wickham color. And Wickham has been discontinued. So I, as soon as I paid Lisa for the notebook, I immediately that evening when I got off work, went to Chic Sparrow's website to see if they still had this guy in stock. 
and thankfully it was still there. And so I ordered one of these. They ended up coming uh, together at the same time last night. So I did do an unboxing video and I don't know, it was night and I had like a weird light glare and I just decided not to, but um, this is a beautiful leather and I think it looks really nice with my Starry Night cover. Anyway, the reason why I uh, bought this one in particular to start out with was because I'm going to be using this in conjunction with my Bible. And this is a cloth Bible from Bibles and Coffee. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the company. Anyway, this was the maker who inspired me to paint my own Bible last year. And I did the Galaxy Bible, if you um, don't remember or haven't seen that video. And I think that it, I did pretty well with it um, for not knowing how to paint. But anyway, um, she just recently launched a new line with Crossway of a couple of different kinds of Bibles that are not customizable. And these are the cloth ones. And so she had like a set A, and then a couple months later, she came out with a set B, and I was immediately drawn to a couple of things with this Bible. Um, one, I've been kind of obsessing over seasonal color analysis and discovered that I am a soft autumn, which means I'm a warm person. So I've been trying to slowly purge my wardrobe and start only buying things um, that match the like color palette that's supposed to match my coloring. And um, although a couple of these colors are not within that, I was really drawn to the pe peachy orangey colors in this. And then also being an Enneagram 4, I really related to this no rain, no flowers. Um, yes, yeah, see, Bibles and coffee. Um, the only thing about this is it's cloth and it's like in my backpack and stuff. I think I'm going to have to put some protectant on it because I'm afraid it's going to get dirty. I mean, a well-loved Bible is a good thing, but I also want my Bible to look nice. So I think I'm gonna have to treat this with Scotch Guard. Anyway, I purchased this to go along with my Bible and this is how I'm going to use that. This is a journaling, journaling Bible. If I could get my lips to work today. Um, this is a journaling Bible, but I don't use it at like an artsy fartsy Bible like most people with journaling Bibles do. Mine is specifically to take notes. Um, when I'm studying, I write things down so that when I come back later, I'll be like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's, it's only for like learning. There's going to be zero art um, in here at all. So when I'm reading through the Bible, I'm going to be taking notes of things. And then I'm going to have this notebook and like I said, I just got it last night. So there's nothing written in here yet, but this is going to be a place where um, when I'm in worship, I'll take sermon notes as I'm going through the Bible. If I have like a thought or a particular passage that, you know, I want to write out or I have a question about something, I have um, a large Fjall Raven backpack that I've been carrying with me because I've been taking all of the things and my Bible is one of them. And another one is this giant commentary on the New Testament that I've been carrying around and my backpack's starting to get heavy guys. Um, so something has to give in the whole um, thing because I want to have that commentary with me in case I'm studying and I want to have this book with me so I can take notes. Um, so I have been finding that I'm not journaling on the go like pretty much at all. So I am relegating my journal back to my Delphonic pouch where it used to live and hopefully I'm going to be able to carry this around with me. I had always left it on my desk but I think I'm going to start carrying it up to my room at night just in case um, the, the urge strikes me to journal. I thought that I would journal more with taking it to work with me but honestly I feel like I'm journaling less because of that. Um, so I think spending time back at my desk or journaling in bed is going to be the answer. So that is going to be my setup for the year. So I've got my journal and I've got my scripture, I guess we'll call it a spiritual journal, and then my personal rings 
as my planner. I think that each of these has a very dedicated use, so none of these things kind of spill over to each other. The only sort of spillover there is that, you know, if I catch a shoplifter and I, I, I don't know, I always name them, so like boot guy. So if I have boot guy that I write a small little snippet about in my planner just to jog a memory so that I put it into my journal. So that's the only spillover there really is. But I don't like to like replan in different places. That kind of drives me nuts. So one planner, one journal, and then a spiritual book. And that's all that I'm going to be using for 2020. What about you guys? I know I've seen on Instagram some pretty fat planner stacks and I'm like, I don't know how everybody keeps up with all of this stuff, but if you can, kudos to you because I know that it is definitely a hobby. And if you find joy in 10 books, um, then that's absolutely fabulous for you. That would make me literally crazy. So three very uh, different books for very different purposes is really all I can possibly keep up with. So this is what works for me. But I'm very interested in hearing what you guys have going for like a setup for 2020. Thanks so much as always for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.